Okay. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at section 8.2 and we're going to introduce ourselves to a couple of ways of representing information about the atom. Um, one of which you're probably familiar with and one maybe, maybe not so familiar with. So let's take a look here. Okay, so this is section 8.2, it's called nuclear structure. If you recall, in the previous section, we talked about the nucleus, right? The nuclear model of the atom, the idea that all the positive charge in an atom is concentrated in a very small region of space called the nucleus. And that outside of that nucleus is a large region of space, which is mostly empty, nothing in it except for these electrons, which are negatively charged. Okay, so we call that the nuclear model. So now we're going to look at a little bit about the nuclear structure of the atom. So I'm going to introduce the periodic table of elements and then the atomic number, the mass number, isotopes, nucleons, and isotopic notation. So let's begin with the periodic table. Okay. I'm going to bring this up so you can see it. You really can't talk too much about this topic without looking at the periodic table. Okay. So here's the periodic table of the elements. There are different ways of representing this, but what we find is that in nature, there are roughly around 90 different types of atoms, each with their own distinct properties. Some of them are gases, some of them are solids, some of them are liquids, some are poisonous, some are not poisonous. We're all familiar with some of them, right? Hydrogen, for example, We're all familiar with hydrogen. We've probably all heard of lithium, lithium batteries. Sodium, of course, is an essential nutrient. Potassium is as well, and calcium. And then, you know, over here we have the non-metals. So we'll get into all that stuff when we start talking about the chemistry as aspect of the course. But for right now, what I want to do is I want to point out that these are distinct types of materials. So a boron is inherently different than a carbon atom. So if I have one boron atom and one carbon, they behave very differently. So we call them elements. They all have their own individual personalities. In this particular representation of the periodic table, there's a number written above the symbol of the element. So H is the symbol for hydrogen. And that number is called the atomic number. The atomic number is the number of protons in one atom of that element. And that element will always have the same number of protons. So we cannot have a hydrogen atom with anything other than one proton. If it had, for example, two protons, it wouldn't be a hydrogen atom anymore. It would be a helium atom, number two here. So see the atomic number is above the symbol of the element generally. We're gonna look at a notation that's a little bit different. But on the periodic table, they put the atomic number above the symbol, okay? So boron, for example, has five protons in one atom. Germanium, which is important in semiconductors, has 32 protons in one atom, okay? A silver atom has 47 protons. A um, potassium atom has 19 protons. That's called the atomic number. Now we're going to look at some other um, terms here. Let me bring back the um, outline for today. Okay. There's some other terms. There's mass number, isotopes, nucleon, and isotopic notation. So we'll look at those as well. And to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw on our little picture board here, our little whiteboard. Okay. 
a little bit of an expanded view of this nuclear model. Okay, a model is like a theory. So we could call it the nuclear theory. So remember you have the nucleus and that's at the center. So it's got all these positive charges in it. And each of those positive charges is called a proton. And there are different symbols for protons. We might write P plus, for example, to represent a proton because it's positively charged. Now outside the nucleus, we have these electrons, right? And so it's sometimes useful to write them in what we call shells, shells of electrons, but we're not gonna worry about that right now. Okay, we're not concerned with the electrons per se right now. What we're concerned with are the protons and the neutrons. Okay, oops, let me get rid of one of those. Made a little bit of a mistake there. Okay, so let's worry about the nucleus. The nucleus in here has protons. They're positively charged, but it also has neutrons. And if you recall from the previous chapter, we talked about the neutron when we were talking about electricity and magnetism. No charge. They don't have electrical charge. They're neutral. That's why they're called neutrons. They're neutral. Okay. So, but each of them have about the same weight. If we write down their mass in kilograms, it's about 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27. They are a little bit different. It turns out the neutron's a little bit heavier than the proton, but we're not going to concern ourselves with that. They're roughly the same, about one and a half or one and two thirds times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. So they weigh about the same. So we have this term, which we call mass number. And the mass number is the number of nucleons in one atom, okay? The mass number is the number of nucleons in an atom, but what's a nucleon? A nucleon is a proton or a neutron, either one. So a proton is a, is a nucleon, a neutron is a, neutron, is a nucleon. The reason we use that term is because it ends up being pretty useful just to count up. We just essentially count the protons and electrons and neutrons. And the total is called the mass number. Okay, so the mass number is just the total number of protons and neutrons in an atom. And generally, it's something that we are told what the value is. We're generally told the mass number. Um, and so we'll look at a couple of examples of that in a moment, okay? So let me show, okay, so we have, you know, we have our mass number, but remember, we also have the atomic number, right? And the atomic number is the number of protons in the atom, one atom, okay? So we also have atomic number. We have, so we have two terms here, atomic number, protons, mass number, protons and neutrons together, or nucleons, if you want to call it that. So that leads us to doing something which we call isotopic notation. Okay, I'm going to call this isotopic notation. And in isotopic notation, I'm just going to use an example. You write the symbol of the element, this is carbon, right? C for carbon. Then you write the atomic number down at the bottom. It's on the left side and a subscript, so a little bit under the symbol. And then up at the top, above the atomic number, you write the mass number. Okay, and that's called isotopic notation. I'll, 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 I'll let you know why it's called that in a moment. So what you can do, and generally the kinds of questions we ask is given this notation, what would be the number of protons in that atom? What would be the number of neutrons in that atom? 
And so you can figure that out by doing the following. We, the atomic number is the number of protons, right? I'll abbreviate it. Atomic number equals the number of protons. So we have that in the notation, six, right? So there's six positively charged protons in the nucleus of a carbon atom. And remember what we said about that. The atomic number is specific, meaning it works for individual elements. So if it didn't have six, it wouldn't be carbon. So you're never gonna see like a nitrogen symbol N with a six at the bottom. Because if it was nitrogen, that, that would have seven. Now, how do I know it has seven? You go to your periodic table, right? So the periodic table will tell you, oh yeah, nitrogen, that has an atomic number of seven. So notice the difference here. In the periodic table, the atomic number appears at the top above the element. But in isotopic notation, the atomic number appears at the bottom below the symbol of the element. Okay, so just be careful with that. Now we can also figure out the mass number because that's given as well. It's, we're told it's 12, right? Okay. But we can get one more piece of information, and that is we can get the number of neutrons from that because the mass number is equal to the number of neutrons and protons. But we already know the number of protons is six, right? We got that from the atomic number. Okay, I'm not doing nitrogen in this example, I'm doing carbon. So if 12 is equal to the number of neutrons plus six, then the number of neutrons would be 12 minus six, which would be equal to six. So in this particular notation, we know we have six protons and six neutrons, okay? Remember, each of those is called a nucleon. So we would claim that we have 12 nucleons, okay? But six of them are protons and six of them are neutrons. Now it turns out, the reason we call this isotopic notation so it turns out in nature, there can be different types of atoms of the same element. So nitrogen, for example, has two naturally occurring isotopes, we call them, different forms. And the way they differ is by their mass number, but not by the number of protons, because the number of protons for carbon has to be six. The atomic number can't be changed for a specific element. So it's actually the number of neutrons that's different. So what we would claim is that, I'm going to come up with another slide here, the number of neutrons in an element is variable, meaning it can change. It doesn't have to be one value. The atomic number, however, is not variable. If it's a different number, atomic number, it's a different element. So what you can find is that, yeah, I'm gonna show this to you here. This is the most common form of carbon in nature. It's right, 99.9% .9 of all the carbon in, on the earth and in us is carbon 12. We call this carbon 12. because the name of the element is carbon, and then you put the mass number over here. Okay, this is just a different way of representing the notation here. Okay, about 0.1% is carbon 13. So it has six protons, but it has seven neutrons. So it's a little heavier, right? This is called carbon 13. Now, there is a third isotope of, actually there's a couple. One, uh, one of them is called carbon-14. This is also found in nature, but there's so little of it. It's much, much less than 0.1%. It's so tiny, but it is detectable. We have technology that can measure it. It's not very much of it, but it's called carbon-14. And it's an interesting isotope. And so this is found in, um, we use it for radiocarbon dating. If you ever look up radiocarbon dating, you can actually tell how old things are if they're thousands of years old by doing some testing of radiocarbon dating. And there's a fourth one in carbon called carbon 11. 
And this is used in, again, much less than 0.1%. There's a tiny bit of it. It's actually used in PET scans. So back to your issue of um, radiology, okay? So these positron emission tomography scans um, use this carbon-11 very often, okay? So these are what are called isotopes. So isotopes are atoms of the same element. So that they're the same element that have differing numbers or different numbers of neutrons. Okay, now if they have different number of neutrons, they would also have a different mass number. Again, the number of protons is not going to be variable. So these would all be examples of isotopes. And that's an O there, isotopes. Isotopes of the carbon atom, two of which are found in nature. One is a little bit found in nature. And then the fourth one is really this one down here at the bottom, carbon 11, is for the most part made in laboratories. Okay, those are isotopes. So let me show you one example. So let's write out the isotopic notation for iron 55, iron 56, and iron 58. Okay, so this is what you do. You go to the periodic table first. And you look up the symbol, you look up iron. Iron, strangely enough, has is the symbol Fe. It's really ferrum. Um, iron's been known for so long that it has a Latin name. So it's called ferrum, but we, in English we call it iron. Okay. You first look, find it in the periodic table. You'll find that it's element number 26, it's somewhere in the middle. Okay. So again, that's the atomic number. So that's the number of protons. So the notation would be Fe. The number of protons goes at the bottom. That's the atomic number. So that's going to go down here. And then this is the mass number. OK, so that would go at the top. OK, so that would be called iron 55. Okay, the second one is iron 56. So again, Fe for iron. 56 would go at the top. This, by the way, is the most common form of iron in nature. And then again, you look in the periodic table, iron is number 26, so that would go down here. And then finally, iron 58, Fe, mass number goes at the top. This is the mass number. Okay. And then the number of protons, the atomic number, goes down at the bottom. Okay, so those are three isotopes. Now you could also ask the question, how many neutrons does each of these isotopes contain? That's easy. You just take the mass number and you subtract from that the atomic number, right? Because the mass number is the protons plus the neutrons, the atomic number is the protons, so the difference would give you the number of neutrons. So 55 minus 26, 29 neutrons. 56 minus 26, 30 neutrons. 58 minus 26, again, this is the most common form of iron in nature, 32. Oops, um, yeah, 32 neutrons. Okay, so which one's heaviest? This one would be the heaviest. The reason it's the heaviest, it has the most mass, is because it has the highest mass number. That mass number is essentially a measure of how heavy the atom is. So 58 is the biggest number. This one would be the lightest. 
okay, in terms of weight. That one wouldn't, wouldn't weigh as much as the other two, okay? Um, so there's our isotopic notation. We talked about what isotopes are. Pretty much every element in nature has isotopes. Um, your textbook shows you a little bit about hydrogen's isotopes. Um, so you can read up on that one, deuterium and tritium is a little side box, but that pretty much gets us to the next section. So in 8.3, we're gonna just do a little bit of discussion about what radioactivity is, and then we'll get a little bit more into this topic.